Deuteronomy 32, verse number 1, the Bible says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Let me just stop right there. Doctrine is important. God gave doctrine. There's a great movement has been for about 50 years in America to lay aside your doctrine and come together under the name of the Lord. You can't come together under the name of the Lord without the right doctrine. Thought I'd just throw that out there, huh? Verse number 3. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways of judgment. The God of truth. Without iniquity. Just and right is he. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, I pray for Brother Ron. Lord, I know what it is to lose a loved one that's dear to you. Lord, I know what it is to want to pick up the phone, to carry on a conversation, and Lord, they're no longer with us. So God, I pray that you would show him grace and minister to his heart, and God, fill that void with yourself, and God, I pray you'd undergird him. I do pray you'd use him in a mighty way on Tuesday morning. And I pray for any that will attend the services there that don't know the Lord, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. They'd have the same blessed hope that we have. Lord, I know one of the great facets of heaven, that it'll be a glad reunion day someday when we're reunited with our loved ones that have went on before us. And God, that gives us... Uh, Hope, and it gives us strength to carry on in these days. Now, I pray you'd bless your people tonight. We're so thankful for the children of God. I pray that, Lord, you'd send revival in our midst. I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel, and I pray you'd glorify your name, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus that we do ask these things. Amen. And amen. I want you to notice several things in this text, and there is a whole lot of preaching in this text, but I want you to notice the regard uh, in verse number 3. Uh, Moses is inspired to pin this down. He says, Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Uh, that word ascribe means to regard the Lord, uh, regard the greatness of God. Uh, we ought to put him above all others in our heart and life. Uh, we ought to regard him to the highest. Uh, and whatever he says ought to be the law of our heart. Uh, we ought to strive to please him and strive to serve him, uh, but we ought to strive to let everybody we know uh, know that the Lord, he is God. Uh, the Lord, he is God. Uh, we see the regard. Uh, notice he's our rock in verse number 4. Uh, he is the rock, not a rock, uh, the rock, and it's capitalized. Uh, you can build your life on him. Uh, you can build your home on him. Uh, hey, I'm glad my salvation's built upon him. Uh, he is the rock. His work is perfect, uh, and I bless his holy name. Uh, and what a start to this thing, but all oh, the things about to change. Uh, notice, if you will, the rebellious in verse number 5. Uh, they have corrupted themselves... Uh, their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Boy, it sounds like our day, doesn't it? There's some that have known the ways of the Lord and they have uh, 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 turned aside from him. Uh, they went a different way. Uh, and we've seen a generation been raised uh, and generation after generation that know not the Lord. Uh, and we live in a crooked and a perverse generation because so many have rebelled against God. Uh, but thanks be unto God, uh, there is redemption available. Look in verse number 6. Uh, do, do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Uh, is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Uh, hath he not made thee and established thee? Uh, I'm glad the Lord Jesus bought our salvation. Uh, and I'm glad there is redemption even available for a crooked and perverse generation. Uh, 
Notice, if you will, the remembrance in verse number 7. He calls them to remember. Remember the days of old. Uh, consider the years of many generations. Uh, ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Uh, when the Most High divided uh, uh, to the nations their inheritance, uh, when he separated the sons of Adam, when he set bounds uh, of the people according to the number of the children of Israel, he's saying, remember, remember, remember the works of God. Uh, and oh, if there's anything this generation needs to know, it's the works of God. We've got a generation don't believe in God. They just believe everything just happened. Boy, we need to tell them. We need to tell them what all God has done. I thank God for verse number 9. Look at the remnant. For the Lord's portion is in His people. Jacob is the lot of His inheritance. He found him in a desert land. And in the waste, howling wilderness, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Uh, do you remember the wasteland God found you in? Uh, do you remember the desert God found you in? Uh, aren't you glad God came your way? Uh, aren't you glad he led you in the ways of righteousness? Uh, aren't you glad that he instructed you? Uh, and whether or not you uh, 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 know this, uh, uh, when God saved you, you became the apple of his eye. Uh, he'll move heaven and earth for you. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, he has promised you uh, uh, to become the joint heir of his throne. Uh, everything God owns you own. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, uh, to be a part of the remnant. Uh, I know it looks like we're losing the battle. Uh, I know it looks like the world's taking over. I know it looks like Satan's got the upper hand. Uh, uh, but neighbor, I've read the back of the book. We win. Uh, what a blessing to be part of that remnant. Uh, uh, that part of that crowd, Jesus. Jesus is coming after uh, I bless his holy name uh, there is a remnant uh, notice the rewarding in verse uh, 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 number 11 uh, as an eagle stirreth up his nest fluttereth over her young spreadeth broader wings taketh them beareth them on her wings uh, so the Lord alone did lead him uh, and there was no strange God with him uh, he made him to ride high on uh, ride high on the high places of the earth uh, that he might eat the increase of the fields uh, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock uh, and oil uh, out of the flinty rock uh, butter of kine and milk of sheep and with fat of lambs and rams uh, of the breed of Bashan and goats uh, with the fat of kidneys of wheat uh, thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape uh, what he's saying uh, as God took him from a desert place uh, and gave him a land flowing with milk and honey uh, I don't know about you but I know about me uh, I'm faring a lot better uh, since I've known the Lord uh, I'm reaping a lot better than I'm sowed uh, hey uh, he's blessed me with the choice blessings of God uh, I thank the Lord for his goodness toward me uh, he don't have to be good to me uh, saving me would have been enough uh, but saving was just the starting point uh, hey he just dumps hands full of purpose my way uh, just blesses and blesses and blesses uh, it seems like uh, when I think he can't get any gooder uh, he gets gooder and gooder and gooder uh, I bless the name of the Lord uh, he is a good God uh, can I say uh, he does reward the faithful in this life and in the life to come. Uh, and then notice the ruined. Look at verse 15. But Jeshuan waxed fat. See, when you get to living high in the hog and you forget about God, you're headed for trouble. God's been so good to some people and they forgot where it came from. But Jeshuan waxed fat and kicked thou art waxen fat thou art grown thick thou art covered with fatness then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation he didn't embrace it he didn't appreciate it he lightly esteemed it oh he recognized it but he didn't think too much of it look at verse 16 they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, uh, to gods whom they knew not, uh, to new gods that came newly up, uh, whom your fathers feared not. Uh, 
of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, uh, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Uh, and when thou uh, and when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them uh, because of the provoking of his sons uh, and of his daughters. Uh, and he said, I will hide my face from them. Uh, I will see what their end shall be, uh, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. You wonder why a lot of churches struggling? They've forgotten the God that bought them. They've forgotten who God is. They're worshiping strange gods. Uh, they're offering up strange praise with strange songs uh, and strange things in their services. Uh, they think you build a church by having a circus. No, you build a church by worshiping and following God. Uh, they've forgotten who God is. Uh, they became forgetful in verse 18. They became froward in verse 20. And they became faithless in verse 20. And that's what's wrong with a lot of churches today. Hmm? I'm interested in verse 11. The Bible says, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth her broader wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Uh, do you know eagles have many similarities to Christians? you study the eagle throughout the Bible, most of the time it is a type or a picture of a Christian. There's a lot of things about eagles mm, that we can draw similarities. Uh, first of all, eagles soar. They're carried about by the wind. Now, Brother Sammy and Miss Susan, Miss Nett and I were out Friday during the wonderful blustery day. Uh, last year when Brother Sammy was here, we took him to Dillard's Outlet and he bought Miss Susan a dress. And so we asked him if they wanted to go over there. They wanted to go over there. We come out of Dillard's and Miss Annette's got one of them cars that talks to you. And uh, it talked to us a lot on Friday. And it said there was a tornado watch in our area, right where we was located. Well, I got to looking and the clouds got to hanging low and breaking apart from each other. The wind was blowing crazy. And I pointed out to Brother Sammy. I said, look at the birds. The birds didn't even have to flap their wings. They was just soaring. Can I help you with something? As Christians, we're not to beat our brains out, flapping our wings. We're to wait on the Holy Ghost to come by, the wind of the Lord. Uh, and we're to soar. You know what he'll do? He'll take us above our problems. Uh, he'll take us above our circumstances. Uh, he'll take us above the things that hinder uh, and bring you down. Uh, all you need is a fresh wind from the glory world, and it'll help you. Uh, eagles soar. Can I say something else about eagle, eagles? They have very distinct markings. They have certain traits about them. Can I say Christians shouldn't look like the world? Christians shouldn't have the attitude of the world. Christians shouldn't have the speech of the world. Uh, Christians shouldn't walk like the world. Uh, hey, when we're out in public, the world ought to say, that's a Christian. Uh, hey, you can tell an eagle from any other bird. Uh, you can tell by its screech. You can tell by the way it soars. You can tell everything about an eagle uh, is majestic. Uh, when they see us, not that we think we're better than anybody. Uh, we realize where God found us. Uh, uh, we're not worth the powder and take the blow away. Uh, but God saw something in us. Uh, and he reached way down uh, and picked us out of the miry clay. Uh, washed us in his blood. Uh, made us new creatures in Christ. Uh, and we do belong to that heavenly country. Uh, and we ought to have an air about us. Uh, we ought to not walk around in the muck and mire of this world. Uh, we ain't, When they see us, they ought to see something different. Uh, they ought to see a royal priesthood uh, and a chosen generation. Uh, hey, our traits ought to be different than the world. Uh, can I say something else about eagles? Eagles are faithful to one mate for life. Mm. Can I say as Christians we ought to be faithful to our mate, but this speaks more of how we're to be faithful to him for life. Because uh, he gave us life. And he gave us life more abundantly. And we ought to be faithful to him. Uh, 
Folks ought to look at us and say, Faithful to the Lord. Uh, faithful to Christ. Uh, faithful to Jesus. Uh, they ought to see uh, a, a, a life that exemplifies what a Christian should be. Uh, ought to never be a question. Uh, if we're not providentially hindered, when it's church time, we'll be in church. Uh, when we're out of church, they ought to still see us faithful to Jesus Christ. Can uh, I say something else about eagles? Eagles are bold and powerful. Do you ever see a film of an eagle taking a fish out of a river? Uh, they just swoop down and take it. They're bold and powerful. Can I help you with something? A Christian's to be humble. Humility is knowing all your strengths and all your weaknesses and abiding therein. Don't try to be something you're not. But can I say, as a Christian... We ought to walk in the Spirit. We ought to be filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you a boldness that this world cannot adapt to. Matter of fact, the world don't know what to do with it. All they can say is that we're crazy. They said Peter was drunk on the day of Pentecost. They'll make up terms for us, but one thing they cannot deny is that we have something they don't. And a Christian ought to be powerful. We ought to have the power of God on us, and we ought to be able to pray the power of God down. Right. It's an indictment against us that we don't. Can I say something else about eagles? Eagles build their nest high upon a rock. Eagles don't build their nest just anywhere. It's always the highest point, and it's on a rock. Trees blow, and you can lose your nest. Too many people are building their nest in places that will not satisfy. But you build your nest on the rock, and it'll not only stay, it'll satisfy you. And I'm glad we have the rock, the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. And when you're built on Him, the winds may blow, uh, the floods may come, uh, hey, lightning may strike, but your nest is secure in Him. Uh, can I say something else about eagles? Eagles only eat fresh meat. You know what you and I are to do? We're to come to the house of God with our, with our bibs on, with our forks and our knives and our plates ready to feast on something fresh from heaven. Mm. Buzzards feed on dead things. Colonel Sanders, buzzers that come around and say, did you hear about that Sammy Filbert, what he did? He's feasting on something dead, because whatever it was, Sammy's already got under the blood. It's gone. But they want to, they want to, you remember what so-and-so, you remember old Ed, what he used to be like, and you remember all this? That's a buzzard. Hmm? Eagles don't have time for that. We're looking for something from heaven. We want something fresh. We want some manna. Are you listening? We want something that will satisfy the soul. you got to watch them buzzards. One thing I've learned over the years, Brother Ray, Baptist Church has got a lot of buzzards. It would be better if we had a lot of eagles. Huh? Huh? Can I say this? Listen, it's easy to find fault. It sure is. Amen. We can find fault in everybody except ourselves. Yeah. Uh, an eagle don't look for faults. And le eagles look for the handiwork of God. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it'd be one thing for me to look for a fault in most Sharon. You know what's a lot better? Than seeing the work of God in her life. Uh, isn't that better? So boy, look what God's done there. God's working on a masterpiece. Can't wait to see the final product when we get to glory. huh? That's how an eagle looks. Uh, an eagle looks for what God's a doing. huh? Buzzards look for what died. Hmm. I don't know about you. You ever been by some roadkill? Stop, pick it up, and put it on your plate? No, because it's nasty. It stinks. Uh, somebody's done run over it 20 times. 
Who wants that, buzzards? And people, it's all the time picking at somebody's faults and their past life and all that. They're just a buzzard. Hmm? Huh? Thank God for eagles. Huh? Well, can I say something else about eagles? Eagles have two sets of eyelids. That's an amazing thing. See, uh, an eagle is a predatory bird, but there are other predatory birds. Falcons, hawks. And if they can't find a fish or can't find a, a, a rabbit or can't find something else, they might say, boy, that eagle looks pretty good. And start chasing after an eagle. When an enemy of an eagle gets on the tail of an eagle, an eagle will uh, 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 just fly straight toward the sun because he has two sets of eyelids and the second set falls over. Uh, the other birds don't have that. Uh, and as they're flying towards that eagle, all of a sudden uh, 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 they're blinded by the sun and they can no longer see the eagle. Uh, and you and I have a distinct uh, uh, thing that the world doesn't have. Uh, and when the hounds of hell uh, or the predators of this world get on our tail, uh, all we got to do is go to the sun, S-O-N. Uh, hey, all they can see is him. They lose all sight of us. Uh, I bless the Lord. Uh, what a privilege to be an eagle tonight. Uh, and can I say this? Uh, eagles encourage a hurting one. I, I used this not long ago in a message, but... Every eagle at some point in their life goes through a molting period. Usually it's an older eagle. He starts plucking out his feathers. And he gets down off of his rock and he gets down on the ground. And when he's on the ground, he's an easy prey for a fox or a wolf or anything. A coyote, anything can get him uh, while he's down on the ground. And he's there and he's going through a state, if you would, of depression, uh, and he's facing some things, uh, and he's just plucking out his feathers. Uh, he doesn't feel much like an eagle, uh, and he's just going through something. Uh, but hey, praise be unto God, the other eagles see him down there. Uh, they say, there's dear old brother so-and-so. Uh, and so those other eagles start surrounding him, uh, start calling to him, uh, start encouraging him uh, and get him back to the rock uh, and there he's safe uh, and it's a blessing uh, I to have a place where we can come uh, and you may come in lower than a snake's belly uh, you may come in feeling worthless uh, you may come in feeling like your rock's a million miles away uh, all of a sudden a brother come put his arm around you uh, brother come and start encouraging you uh, a sister lets you know she's been praying for you uh, all of a sudden a little bit of that goes on uh, little singing little preaching uh, and it gets you back to your rock uh, and you feel like an eagle again hallelujah huh? what a blessing to be a part of that kind of church I don't know about you I've seen my share of the judgmental churches I've had my fill of the pharisaical churches I don't have any time for them critical churches thank God for a godly church can I say this in our text verse we find that an eagle stirreth up her nest and she fluttereth over her young spreadeth her broader wings taketh them beareth them on her wings now it's kind of hard to understand but let's use Miss Crystal and Miss Elizabeth as an illustration because Ella Rose isn't here and uh, Ella Rose will be coming. Thank God for Miss Ella Rose coming. Thank God for my daughter-in-law who loves Jesus and I know that her and Christian's going to raise Ella Rose in the house of God. What a blessing. And uh, she's ready. She's had a fill. Maybe you hadn't figured it out. She's pregnant. She don't need any comments about her feet being swollen. All she knows. Trust me. She's living with it, huh? She don't need any comments about you know. Hey, you you look like you're about to pop. She knows. She knows all that stuff. Just leave your mouth off of her. You're going to have to deal with the big dog. That's me. Uh, that's my daughter-in-law. She's carrying Ella Rose. And just keep your mouth off of her, cause I'll smack you. I'll put Jesus on the shelf and I'll smack you twice. <laughs> but we're not talking about Ella Rose. We're going to talk about little sweet Elizabeth. And Mama Crystal. Isn't that a gift of God right there? Isn't that precious? Now let's...
just suppose her to be a little eaglet. Now what eagles do is they build their nest. If you've ever been over to the zoo and saw an eagle's nest, it don't look like a little cardinal nest. We got a dove that comes to our house every year and builds a nest, and we've tried to get rid of the nest. It just rebuilds it. It's made out of a little straw, and they'll find thread, and they'll find mud, and they'll find all this. Not an eagle. Eagles make their nest out of big old sticks, something that's really going to protect them. And they put it on the rock. And then I done told you eagles eat fresh meat, but what they'll do is they'll get a rabbit, and they'll eat that rabbit, but they'll take the pelt of that rabbit, and they'll fur line that nest, and then have them eaglets. And them eaglets love it in that nest. It's warm, it's cozy, it's comfortable, it's fuzzy. They like it. Just like little Elizabeth likes just hanging out with Mama right now. And them eaglets... They get used to mama going and getting fresh meat and bringing it back and dropping it in their mouth. Uh, by the way, that's what's wrong with some of you. You've been saved 30 years and you're still waiting for the preacher to come drop some fresh meat in your mouth instead of getting in the Word of God and getting some for yourself. Uh, but here's what happens. Mama eagle knows that little eaglet can't stay in that nest forever. So Mama Eagle gets them and puts them on her back, takes off for the sky, turns sideways and drops them. And of course, you can imagine the terror in that eaglet's mind as it's just flocking in the wind and doesn't know how to fly yet. And just all of a sudden, Mama swoop down underneath them, catch them on her back, fly back up, take her back to the nest. And she does that and she does that to kind of get them used to the fact that, hey, one of these days you've got to get out of the nest. But little Elizabeth likes the nest. And she's got used that mama's going to catch her, and she's going back to the nest. Well, verse 11 says, as an eagle stirreth up her nest. What mama eagle does is mama says, they're never going to get out of the nest. I'm trying to figure this out with Jordan. He ain't never leaving the nest. Yeah. yeah, I hear you, Papa. Uh, well, what Mama does is first thing she does is she removes the pelt. Takes away the warmth and the comfort. It's cold on that rock. They stay in the nest. Then she puts some rocks and sharp things in there and sticks and all that. Takes away all the comfort. And then she stops bringing the food to them. And she makes that eagle get out of that nest and go on to become the eagle it's supposed to do. She stirs up the nest until the eagle becomes the eagle. For the next few minutes, that's what I want to preach on. When God stirs your nest. Hmm. Can I say, it's wonderful being in the comforts of God, Him just feeding us and Him just blessing us and being in the warm little cozy church and all that. But can I say, that's not why God saved us. This is where we come and get refreshed, but we're to go out there and be an eagle. And too many don't want to get out of the nest. Can I say, God will stir your nest first of all so you'll reach your maximum potential. You'll never be the eagle you're supposed to be if you stay in the nest. You've got to go out and be an eagle. And to reach your maximum potential, God will put some hardship in your life. He'll put some things in your life, take some comforts away, so you'll be able to be the eagle that other people can aspire to be. I don't know, but I imagine a blue jay looks at an eagle and says, Boy, I wish I was an eagle. Mm -mm. I imagine... Even a falcon says, you know, I'm a pretty majestic bird, but I don't compare to that one. Hmm? Can you imagine Ben Franklin wanted to make the turkey the national bird? But thanks be unto God, somebody had some sense to say, hey, Ben, you ever seen an eagle? He looked at the turkey and then took one look at the eagle and said, oh, I was wrong. Uh, 
Well, in order to reach your maximum potential, God will stir your nest. Some things you may not like, some things you may not enjoy, some things God may put in your life, uh, but it's not for your bad, it's for your good. Uh, is that not what Joseph said? Uh, uh, you meant it uh, unto bad, but God meant it for good, and God stirs your nest so you can be the best eagle you can be. Can I say this? He'll stir your nest so He can reveal in you what He has accomplished. If you never leave the nest, nobody will ever see you just majestic in the sky. Nobody will ever see the traits that He's put in you. God will stir your nest so He can reveal to others what He's done in your life. Mm -hmm. Listen, I know what happens. You get to looking at you, you don't see much. And you get down on yourself, you're probably your worst critic. You know, why did God save me? I don't ever do anything for God. God sure uh, uh, didn't get much when He got me. And you just pour mouth yourself to death. But others see what God's done in you. And so God will stir your nest so they'll get a good glimpse of what He's done in you. Huh? Keep in mind, God has already seen the finished product. Hmm? Huh? I like that song, used to, the kids sang it. It's a good song for everybody. He's still working on me. But He is working on you. And if you could ever get in your mind that He's not only got you in His hands, He's got His hands on you. And He is doing a work. He is working out some of the rough edges, and He's doing some things. And sometimes He'll come along and stir your nest so that He can reveal to others His handiwork in your life. I thought about this. God will stir your nest to get you to rely on the wind. Hmm? Listen, one of the hardest things for me to do is not to teach you what a verse means. Well, the hardest thing that a man of God or a preacher has to do is try and get you to depend on the Spirit of God, to discern His voice, to know when it's Him speaking or when it's your own desire. That is a very difficult thing. Hmm? It's like the old adage, you can lead them to water, but you can't make them drink. And see, God will stir your nest to get you to rely on the wind, the Holy Spirit. Hmm? How can you walk in the Spirit if you don't know His voice? Hmm? And so He'll stir your nest to get you to rely on the wind. Can I say this? Sometimes He'll stir your nest to remind you to whom you belong. Sometimes we get like Jeshuan, we get a little big for our britches. And God stirs our nest just to remind us whose we are. Hmm? And then I thought about this. Sometimes He stirs our nest to ready us for what lies ahead. Hmm? We serve a God that knows what's on down the road. He already knows tomorrow. He already knows what's around the next curve and the next bend. He knows and He readies us for that. My dear friends, if we go into it blind, we could be in trouble. I'm glad that God knows how to ready us. Now, how does He stir our nest? First of all, through the hammer of the Word of God. The Word of God breaketh like a hammer. Sometimes preaching is hard. Sometimes the preacher's stepping on your toes, and sometimes he's hitting you over the head. But the Word of God, God uses this Bible to beat all the rough edges out of us. And that's how He stirs our nest, through preaching. Thanks be unto God for the Word of God that is in us. David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that it might not sin against thee. The Word of God will protect your life from so much. And can I say, He readies us. He stirs our nest through the hammer of the Word of God. He also stirs our nest by touching our health. It's amazing how sincere we can get in our prayer life when we think we've got a health condition. Hmm. It's amazing when we're big and strong and doing everything we want to do and nothing for God, and then God touches our health and all of a sudden we can't do all those things, but we're ready to do anything for God. He knows how to stir your nest. He knows how to touch it. You just realize if God just cut off our air supply for about two minutes you realize we'd all be brain dead. Hmm? See, He has and 
our being and moves in our life, our very breath is in his hand. And God knows how to stir our nest. Sometimes he stirs our nest through hardships, through financial problems, through family problems, through all kinds of problems. Huh? Sometimes he'll put idiots in the government. No shortage of them. Take your pick, either side of the aisle. Huh? Amazes me people so dumb and how rich they are. That's a whole nother message. But God knows how to cause a little financial problem. That'll make you get a hold of God real quick. Uh, family problems, all of a sudden you have no problem making time for God. Knows how to stir our nest. And I say sometimes he stirs our nest through humiliation. God will give you time to humble yourself, but if not, he knows how to humble you. And trust me, it's a lot better if you humble yourself than letting God humble you. God knows how to strip the pride from us. Hmm? Uh, listen. It's an embarrassing thing when God makes you go to doctors and they start probing and poking and doing things on you you don't really want to do. Hmm? I remember when uh, I first was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago, Miss Annette had them run every test known to man on me. I didn't like any of them. I did not even a little bit. Huh? But it's amazing how you'll junk your pride when your life's on the line. Hmm? Uh, I don't like any of it. Huh? Anybody likes any of that, you're messed up. Uh, really? Uh, there are certain things I just soon never have to go through. Hmm? It's amazing, isn't it, Brother Ray? How just a little tweak and our health can humiliate us. Huh? You know what? That's good for us. Keeps us from getting all swelled up, thinking we're something. I've heard people boast, well, I don't ever take any medicine. I only end up taking handfuls a day. You better be careful what you say. Hmm? Ah. Can I say this? Some God, times God will stir your nest by putting you in a hearse. You know, this isn't preached on much anymore because we're in that lovey-dovey, God loves you, nothing ever bad going to happen to you era. But you know what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5.5? 5? The Apostle Paul said this, to deliver such as and one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Sometimes... If the hammer don't work, and if humiliation doesn't work, and if God can't get your attention and start to turn you around to where you'll serve him and live for him, he'll call the undertaker. And can I say this? If God has to put you in a grave, you lose all your rewards. Hmm? God does know how to stir our nest. Said all that, say this. If God gets to stirring in your life, don't resist Him. Be thankful. And just follow His hand because He's doing it for His glory. And it's a lot better to jump on board at the start than to let Him to continue to put things in your nest to make your life uncomfortable and miserable. Remember, He come to give you life and life more abundantly. The abundant life is found in obedience to Him, in following Him. And the hardship comes, He starts stirring our nest when we start resisting Him, when we start getting to the point we don't listen to Him anymore, when we start feasting on dead things, when we start taking Him for granted. God help us to appreciate Him, and God help us to follow Him. If God's stirring your nest tonight, why don't you just yield it all to him and let him cause you to soar again so others can see 
the majesty of the maker in your life. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Maybe you need to come tonight and say, Lord, help me to be the eagle you designed for me to be. Maybe tonight you need to come and tell the Lord you appreciate the work he's done in your life. Maybe you've come to, you need to come tonight and say, Lord, I'll be honest with you, I didn't come to feast on anything fresh, and I'm sorry. Maybe he spoke to something else in your life that he's not pleased with. Why don't you come and say, Lord, by your grace, take it away. Take it. I, I don't need it in my life if it doesn't please you. Maybe he spoke to you about something else. The altar's open. Maybe God wants to use you during this invitation to be a blessing and an encouragement to somebody that's off their rock. Maybe you need to go to somebody, put your arms around them, tell them you're a blessing. Don't do it unless the Lord tells you. But if God puts somebody in your heart, go to them. Give them a word of encouragement. Might be exactly what they need tonight. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.